Shin Okazaki is a fan favorite character in the manga and anime. His really cool outfits that many people have tried to replicate to his unique and lovable personality. His connected lip and ear piercing and Vivian Westwood letter chain are one of the most iconic things in the series, which has led many to want to buy the real thing. Shin is many people's favorite characters for many reasons. Shin's actions makes the reader ask many questions about him as a character and his backstory. We feel bad for someone that had to mature so fast because of the childhood he had and how that affected him as he got older. What he has to go through and must do just to making the world and deal with his past. We first see him when he auditions to be the third member of Blast, replacing Ren. When Hachi asks him to fill out an application, he actually initially lies about his age, saying he's 18 despite him only being 15. He impresses Nanosaki with his basis skills and becomes their third member. After asking who his favorite basis is, he says it's Ren from Trap Nest. Nana being Nana makes sure to tell Shane to suppress Ren as one of the best bases in the world, and so Shane's legacy with Blast begins. I just love how Shane's character is set up. Not only does it do a lot for his character, it also sets up a lot for others and the band as a whole. Nana says he only looks 16, which is foreshadowing to the fact that he is only 15. Then we get to see Shin's immediate chemistry with the rest of the band. He gets extremely excited when asked who is the bassist that he admires the most, showing his love for music and Ren from Trap Nest. Not only that, I think it shows just how much Shin doesn't really get to interact with people with the same interests and passions as him. You can just tell, even though he seems mature, his inner kid and fan comes out immediately when asked about music and asked to join the band. He doesn't think twice about joining or anything. There is no hesitation, just pure excitement which shows a lot about his character. We also see more of this in the next chapter when Shin shows genuine interest in Nana playing drums and asking her questions about who taught her. Shin also reveals his real age Nana, and we learn that he doesn't spend much time at home which concerns Nana and Hachi, but they don't really take immediate action or ask further questions. Shin not only shows his true age, but that he's been staying at Nobu's house, another member of Blast, and when he isn't staying at Nobu's house, he is staying at older women's house for some reason. Nana and Hachi again seem concerned. At this point, it's pretty clear that Shin's personal and family life isn't normal. He is first of all, 15 and lying about being 18 to join a band, seems mature for his age, doesn't have a place to stay, and is staying at strangers' houses. Whether he is a rebellious teenager, or legitimately doesn't have a place to stay because he has family issues or is a question. The way the author Ai Izawa just puts subtle character details in so early is so impressive. So early on, we already see so much about Shin. The next thing we learn about Shin is that he is somewhat an alcoholic at just 15. After Blast's first show flew together, Shin is shown straight up just taking shots and shots of alcohol. While Nobu is nearly blacked out from drinking, Ai Izawa makes sure to show that Shin can drink his fair share. At only 15, it's clear that this isn't Shin's first time drinking. Not only that, Shin also smokes cigarettes, just like the rest of Blast. Everyone around Shin don't really seem to mind Shin drinking and smoking. Yeah, Nana makes a comment about him drinking and Hachi tells him not to smoke, but do they really make an effort to stop him? I don't want to put the blame on them, cause it's really not their sole fault, but I can't help but throughout my read, to be internally yelling at Hachi and Nana to help Shin some more of his problems. As Hachi shows how much she loves Shin throughout the series, almost like a son to her, but still never really takes full action to help Shin and stop his actions. But of course, things get worse. It is also revealed that Shin sleeps with women for money, essentially being a male prostitute at 15. It is officially revealed when he meets Reira for the first time from Trap Nest, and Reira makes a comment about Shin being cute. Shin shows her his business card, and it escalates from there. The next chapter, we already see them together for the first time, and Reira is paying Shin a large amount of money for his services. Shin briefly talks about his not-so-secret side business with Nobu, but not really much really. Mostly how Shin believes that the women that pay him to sleep with him are lonely. I believe Shin feeling bad for the girls that pay him to sleep with him. He knows what it feels like to be lonely, so why not help them out and make some money while having a place to stay for the night. While it's obviously not that simple as to why Shin does this, and it's definitely not right and pretty disturbing as Shin is only 15, it does give some insight to why Shin does this and his mindset. We do get to learn more about why he does this in the future. Reira and Shin's first meeting and hookup leads to a further relationship between Shin and Reira, and arguably Shin's main character arc as a character and is what I will likely be focusing on for the rest of the video. While still touching on other things like his family life, bad habits, maturity for his age, and how other characters affect him 
Making Shin the character we know. Shin and Reiru's relationship, of course, is a shock and hard to watch develop to readers as the age gap is insane and again, Shin is only 15 and Reiru is 23 at the time. It's a big topic in the manga that fans of the series seem to talk about a lot and discuss. As Hachi, Nana, Nobu, Takumi are all occupied in their own drama with Hachi being pregnant, Shin and Reiru have a secret relationship going on that we see play out mainly in the background until the end. Reiru continues to pursue Shin and they develop a quick chemistry with each other. Not just that of a prostitute and a client, but something more intimate. Shin stops charging Reira to meet with him early on. Reira gets really comfortable with Shin and shares many things about herself with him. Like her real name and her struggles with writing songs for Trapness and her overall feelings with her relationships and the band. Shin not only is there to listen, but gives Reira the attention she is seeking and soon is showing actual feelings. We see this on multiple occasions early on. As Reira is clearly in the wrong here pursuing this relationship with Shin, as she is the adult in the situation, there is a lot that went on leading into their relationship together. I'll first briefly touch on Reira, but not so much as this is a Shin video. First, it's clear Reira was never satisfied with her relationship with Yasu, as it was just a way of making Takumi jealous or a way to deal with unrequited feelings, since she's in love with him and still is in love with Takumi. Reira is never really able to express her feelings through things like writing songs for Trapness, as we see here expressed to Shin, or simply laying it out to people like Takumi or Yasu. She lacks and craves that attention that Shin gives her even if she knows it's wrong but still continues. Shin isn't afraid to compliment her either and support her. I do believe she also is kinda into the relationship being a secret and it being something wrong. Kinda like a fun little secret kept apart from a real life celebrity life, as sick as that is. Rara using this as a coping mechanism from her true feelings is a possibility from the start, but I find it hard to believe that she can use a relationship for that reason. Rara definitely starts to develop true feelings for Shane as it is hard for her to believe him and breaking things off at the end does hurt her. I still can't help but think Reira is still basically grooming and taking advantage of Shin though. Reira is clearly aware of the harm in their relationship. She hides it for a reason and wants to keep it a secret and is super paranoid of any paparazzi. That's not to say Reira doesn't truly like or even love Shin though. While their relationship is unfolding, we learn a ton about Shin, mainly about his childhood and how he was raised. We see a flashback with Shin and a girl that looks a lot like Reira, but is actually a girl named Ryoko. We can actually learn a lot from just these three panels. The first one, we just see Shin and Ryoko, who looks a lot like Reira. We see that Shin spent the night at her place. Then we see Ryoko say you have improved in your technique and speaking, which makes us question what technique and in what way does he speak better. The next thing Shin says is brief, and many readers will miss this. Thanks to you, my business is prosperous. And what business is Shin running? Exactly. This girl Ryoko has been setting up and behind Shin's prostitution business. The next thing she says is, I transformed an angel into a demon. Yeah, this woman is actually sick. Ryoko was the one who gave Shin a home when he was younger, but also groomed him so he was more comfortable being a male prostitute. Honestly, this is my second read of the manga and I won't lie, I almost completely missed this my first read. Ryoko was a huge part of Shin's story and development. I mean, she is the person who raised Shin. As we also learn that Shin doesn't really like his stepdad and the other way around. When Yasuo needs Shin to sign his contract, he needs Shin's guardian to sign it for him as he's a minor. Yasuo did some research and finds that Shin doesn't have a mom, not even an adoptive one. Yasuo tells him he needs the signature of a legal guardian. Yasuo offers to see his stepdad for Shin to sign the contract as it's clear that Shin doesn't want anything to do with his stepdad. When Yasuo is signing the contract with his stepdad, he asks if he has any sort of feelings towards Shin. He says, he never had any affection for Shin and God knows he's made some efforts. Another thing to add is Shin tells Misato one night that he wishes his parents would have never given him life. Now this is a lot to take in. First, Shin never had any real parental love from his parents. His mom took her own life early in his life and his stepdad clearly never had any true love for him. Leaving Shin to feel extremely neglected and turn to someone like Ryoko to raise him and give him the love and attention he lacked. We also see some of Shin's actions reflecting the fact that he never had a real mom just in the way he treats and acts around Hachi. Hachi is shown to be a mother figure. Shin shows so much love for Hachi like she's a mother to him. I mean just look how he talks about her and gets so excited to see her. Hachi also just treats Shin like a kid most of the time even though she does say he's immature for his age. Shin also really wants Nobu to be with Hachi giving him advice when the whole situation with Takumi, Nobu, and Hachi is happening. Like, he just wants the people he loves to be together. When the band loses Hachi to Takumi, we see the effects this has not only on Nana and Nobu, but on Shin as well. 
Shin really wants her back and wishes to see her again, and asks questions about her while Nana begs him not to even mention her. Shin not having a mother figure shows so much between his relationship with Hachi, calling her up when he hasn't seen her in a while and really misses her. Shin calls her while she's at Takumi's house clearly just to talk to her and see how she is doing as they haven't seen each other since they saw the fireworks. Shin doesn't really care that she has left for Takumi and truly just wants to know what's going on with Hachi, saying he will stand by her side no matter what happens. But I think it really hits Shin during this scene that Hachi has truly left them for Takumi as Hachi doesn't even give him the time of day to talk to him as she is quickly interrupted by Takumi. Shin really hurt by this, almost like him realizing that he really can't have a loving person in his life like Hachi to look up to but has to resort to people like Ryoko or Reira that generally are using him. So of course, Shin goes back to Reira. In the very same chapter we see this. This time not Reira reaching out to Shin, but Shin reaching out to Reira by showing up at her hotel. Shin immediately goes into her room and starts playing his guitar and singing presumably about Hachi or Reira or both. Shin also stays the night. When Shin does finally get to see Hachi, we get to hear some of his concerns and compassion for Hachi. When he learns about the whole situation with Hachi, Nobu and Takumi. Hachi being pregnant, Shin suggests she aborts it and believes the marriage with Hachi won't bring happiness. He says not to take him seriously and after learning Takumi wants to get married and keep the baby, Shin suggests Hachi just follow her heart. This is Shin's first time finding out Hachi's pregnant as everyone was hiding it from him as it might hit too close to home for Shin and bring back painful memories. Like he won't find out eventually and like he wouldn't be able to handle it. Shin also says that even if it's a similar situation with when he was born, Hachi will have a different way of dealing with things, wishing he was Hachi's child. Showing even more love for Hachi and his spies for the people who raised him. We also get confirmation of what happened to Shin's mother. Skipping the whole paparazzi segment of the series, we get to see some more Shin development. We see Shin and Reira together once again. Not much new to be fair, we find out they have the same birthday which leads to them having a conjoined birthday party with Trapness and Blast there, and even Hachi. Hachi coming to the party was a huge deal for Shin, and was one of the main reasons Hachi even came for Shin. Despite Hachi knowing how mad Takumi would be if she went, seeing it as purely business, Hachi goes anyway since she knows how much it would mean to Shin. Everyone else knows this as well, as Shin is asking about Hachi before the party, but the rest of Blast don't invite her themselves, afraid of the consequences that Takumi will have for her. Luckily, Hachi does make it to the party to spend some time with Shin. This does come with some problems though for Hachi. Hachi is yelled at, and Takumi gets extremely angry at her. Then, Shin gets the bomb that is Takumi knowing about his relationship and affair with Reira. Takumi being the asshole he is, doesn't really tell Shin that, you know, it's wrong because of the age difference and the fact that he's only 16. Takumi basically cares more about how it'll affect Reira's career in Trap Nest. The point is that Shin's secret affair with Reira is out though. Shin is extremely shocked and honestly hurt by this. Again, as Reira was one of the few people Shin could turn to after Hachi basically betrayed Blast for Takumi and Shin has barely been able to see her. Even when he does, Takumi is in the way and interrupts, like we saw earlier. Right after that though, we see this. Reira asks Shin to come meet her at her room. Shin first ignores her before they get into the room to not let anyone see them together. Once they're inside, Shin lays it on her. It's too dangerous for them to be seeing each other because of both of their careers, let alone the age difference of the two. So Shin has to make the decision of risking their relationship getting out and Reira possibly facing bigger consequences or waiting it out and starting it over in two years. Shin makes the decision of waiting it out, showing how much he actually does love Reira. He doesn't want another of the few people he loves and cares for taken away like Hachi was. Waiting it out will really show how much he cares for Reira as he said himself. Then Reira will be more important to him than anyone. And Reira agrees soon later that they should stop seeing each other for both of their careers and sake. Both extremely hurt by this. Shin thinking how much he literally loved Reira, if she was really worth the time and if she was true love despite it not being perfect. Breaking down in front of Hachi after she asks if he really loves Reira that much. If he is willing to wait, but will he even feel the same after waiting? Does that mean he even ever loved her? Shin not receiving love as a kid makes it hard for him to truly give it and receive it. It's clearly confusing and hard for him to reflect on something like his relationship with Reira. After breaking things off with Reira, Shin resorts to Ryoko, the woman who raised him but also hurt him, groomed, and controlled him as a child. Shin gets arrested after police trade the apartment after they find weed in the apartment. Reira feels extremely guilty for the fact that Shin went to jail. But then, immediately after, Reira not getting the action she needs from Shin, resorts to Takumi. 
as Raya loves Takumi and really doesn't mind just being another one of his lovers. Has Raya just been with Shin to get her mind off the fact that she will never be with Takumi? Or can she really not decide between Shin and Takumi at this point? Is Raya really just using Takumi to keep herself satisfied while Shin is in jail? Shin gets out of jail soon after this and is really changed by it and all the events leading up to it. He also makes Shin apologize for the fact he went to jail and possibly put Blast career back. You can really tell Shin does feel extremely guilty for what he's done. Especially when Nana freaking ridicules him like crazy and tells him to get on his knees and apologize. But this also in my opinion is one of the most powerful moments in Shin's character development and journey. Nana not feeling any sympathy for Shin as Nana also went through a lot of similar things that Shin did like not having a lovable family life and being abandoned tells Shin the straight truth. You act as though you are cool with everything because you lack a determination to challenge the odds. Nana wants Shin to not be a victim to a situation but challenge it, which I honestly think has some truth to it. Shin feels the same as we learn later. Nana brings up what Shin promised when they first met. Have you made up your mind to stay here and fight alongside us? Shin reiterates their pact to Nana. I will definitely surpass Ren. This time I will give it my all. The next defining moment for Shin happens right after this. He is catching up with Hachi after getting out and Takumi being Takumi snatches the phone from Hachi and asks if he still is in love with Reira and if he's willing to meet with her again. He says, no way, it was your idea to give up and start all over. I must pull myself together. I'm going to put in my best efforts. I have no confidence or calmness to support Reira. If I still like her when I'm growing up, then I will welcome her back, but I cannot promise her. The last thing we get is Shin almost sending a message to Ryoko. Goodbye, my goal is to be like Junichiru. Saying basically goodbye to his old self and the person Ryoko made him into. He doesn't actually send the message though. He says Ryoko doesn't really check her email. But I think also Shin deep down also knows that she doesn't even deserve to know what Shin is up to anymore and doesn't deserve a goodbye. Then messages Reira saying something similar. When I become Junichiru, I will be with Reira. Confirming that yes, Shane will wait for Reira to see if he still loves her. And about the I will become Junichiru, to be honest, I don't know who Junichiru is, and I've done a ton of research and I can't find anything. But here is what I think it means. Shin is basically referring to the fact that he's not confident or calm enough to support Reira. Junichiru is the person he wants to become. It's the Shin that wants to get away from his past. Away from Ryoko, away from his prostitution business, and away from being scared of determination and challenging the odds to become a better basis than Ren. We see so much change in Shin in volume 19 and 20 of Nana, which is so good, I'm so glad we get to see it. It is unfortunate that we don't get to see it come to full fruition. We really just get to see the start of this new Shin, which if I had to guess, Shin doesn't end up with Reira, for the simple fact that Shin wants to change for the better. He will simply outgrow Reira and not love her anymore. The reason Shin loved Reira was because he wasn't gaining attention from others. Shin had to go to Reira when he was getting neglected by Hachi. Not only that, he's 16. Of course he's going to change. Yeah, Shin is mature. That still makes him 16 and naive though. He doesn't even know truly why he loved Reira. Shin had a really rough childhood and really no true love was given to him besides someone like Ryoko, which wasn't love, it was grooming and controlling. Once Reira gave him that attention and love, I feel like Shin couldn't help but fall in love. Which that whole situation is also arguably grooming. He met Reira because of his prostitution business. Shin is going to outgrow Reira. Unless, like Shin says, they literally completely start over and Shin starts to love Reira for different reasons. Now let's wrap the character of Shin up. Shin is a 16 year old boy who had an extremely rough childhood. Which pretty much explains many of his actions. So bad, he wishes he was never born. Never having a true mother figure as his mom committed suicide shortly after he was born. Left with just his stepdad, Shin never really experienced much if any parental love. Living with his stepdad and his brother who generally received more attention from his stepdad. Shin ended up living and being raised by Ryoko, the woman who truly raised him. Ryoko lived in the same apartment complex. Despite not seeing much of Ryoko in the manga, Ryoko is a huge part of Shin's life and someone who changed him to be who we see in the series. We get to see a lot about Ryoko, but many could miss important details about her. First again, Ryoko was truly the one who raised Shin. Not only raising Shin, but grooming him and controlling him to be who she wanted him to be. Making Shin comfortable with sex and doing what she wanted him to do. We see this pretty early on in fact. Ryoko tells Shin that she sees his technique and speaking ability has improved. Would it be my education? Shin replies, thanks to you, my business is prosperous. What's his business? Prostitution. So you can assume what education Ryoko was giving Shin. Wow, this lady is sick. She even admits herself 
that she turned Shin from an angel to a demon. Ryoko was nice enough to give Shin a home and a roof over his head, but at what cost? Turning him into a male prostitute and making him so comfortable with sex and being controlled at such a young age, affecting Shin in a huge way. Shin doesn't know what it feels like to receive parental love and true romantical love from someone. Not to mention the way being a prostitute at such a young age would have an effect on him. Not just that, but being introduced to alcohol and smoking by Ryoko. Imagine, Shin has to see love and sex as purely business at just 15, and for what we know, possibly younger than that. This definitely affects him in a huge way when it comes to building relationships, his confidence, his mindset, relating to people his age, receiving and recognizing what love really is, and making him mature faster. When we first see Shin, he seems honestly normal. He wants to join the band Blast and seems extremely excited. Seeing Shin be this excited just shows a lot. Like I said before, it shows how passionate Shin is for music and being a bassist. He gets to talk to people about music and his favorite bassist Ren from Trap Nest. Specifically saying he's a fan of Ren and not Trap Nest. By the way, Shin lights up when he gets to talk to Hachi about Ren and music. It shows it isn't a common occurrence for him. And when Nana asks him to join Blast, there is no hesitation. He joins instantly and even makes a pact with Nana that he will surpass Ren as a bassist. Again, we see a lot of Shane's character here. We see his mature side to him, of course, from the simple fact of wanting to join Blast and his initial attitude to Hachi, Nana, and Nobu. Even lies on the application Hachi gives him by saying he's 18. We also see how much he loves music and is so excited to talk about it. Showing, in my opinion, how little he gets to talk about this with people. And showing his young side of him as again, he's still just a 15 year old. We soon see Shin reveal his prostitution business to people like Nobu and Reira. Reira herself, of course, pays Shin for a service. Them forming a relationship far greater than just a client and prostitute, having true feelings for each other. But I really see it as Shin not really being able to help himself not to catch feelings for possibly the first client to actually show compassion and love towards him and something more than just a one night thing. Also, someone he could relate to. And Reira might even be one of the younger clients he's had. Shin only really had Ryoko who controlled him and groomed him, which Shin might even love Ryoko as well, so him falling for Reira isn't really something strange for someone his age, and someone that has gone through what he has, someone that hasn't received much love and affection as a kid. Reira on the other hand is a little more complicated, not to say Shin isn't as we really don't know why Shin really likes Reira, we can just assume. As for Reira, I think she's in a moment where she knows Takumi doesn't like her and doesn't really have someone to talk to and have them listen. Shin is one that can listen and finds him attractive, despite him being 15 when they meet. Which from what I see, I think Reira could be into the fact that he's just 15, as gross as that is. While Shin is with Reira, he still longs for that motherly figure he never had, reaching out to Hachi to ask how she is doing when she leaves for Takumi. Shin, throughout the whole series, treated Hachi as a motherly figure and Hachi reciprocated that feeling back to him. Hachi means a lot to Shin for that reason. Hachi treating Shin still like a kid and feeling sympathy towards him and telling him to stop smoking and drinking even if she doesn't really fully take action. Their relationship with each other means a lot and does a lot for Shin. On the contrary, Nana doesn't really feel much sympathy throughout the series for Shin. Nana also had a similar upbringing to Shin when it comes to being neglected. So to her, Shin's actions aren't really justified and he needs to learn to become stronger and have real determination to be a good bassist, which makes Shin really strong and changed during the end of the series. Nana and Hachi complement each other really well when it comes to their relationship and her interactions with Shin, which is ironic but also perfect. A turning point for Shin is actually on his and Reira's birthday actually. When he gets confronted by Takumi and is told to break things off with Reira because if things get out, it'll destroy Reira's career. He doesn't initially listen, but he soon does. But heads right back to Ryoko when he can't see Reira anymore, showing he didn't learn or see what's wrong about the situation. He just wanted to protect Reira's career. Of course, Shin is arrested at Wild Side Ryoko's. This is when a true change starts. Shin gets to reflect on the past months with Reira and Blast. Shin apologizes to Nana after getting out of jail, which I see as a huge changing point in Shin's character. Like I said, Nana doesn't have any sympathy for Shin. She tells him the straight truth. He doesn't have any determination to fight with them to make Blast great. Nana and Blast gave them so much. Nobu gave him a place to stay away from Ryoko, where he had someone that truly cared for him. Nana was someone he could relate to, play music with, talk to, was honest with him, and was just a true friend that cared. Hachi was that motherly figure he always wanted. Ryoko was someone that has gotten him into nothing but trouble 
and generally ruined him. I think he saw this while locked up and it all hit him when he apologized to Nana. After making that pact once again with Nana, he pretty much changed. He said goodbye to Ryoko for good and he told Reira that he's going to wait until he's older to see her. Or as he put it, until he becomes like Jinichiru. Which again, I don't know who that is, but we can assume he means until he becomes confident and calm to support her. Or just improves as a person and becomes the person he wants to be. We unfortunately never get to see Shin becoming a better person out of this, only the start of it. But I honestly have faith in him. He shows he isn't that mature kid people think he is. He still has flaws that he has to deal with from his childhood trauma. He might have had to grow faster, but that doesn't mean he's mature. He was still that 15 year old kid. Shin still needs to go through that maturing phase, which is what he means when he says become a Jinichiru, and when he made that pact with Nana. And now that he has people that he loves and connects with in Nobu, Nana, Hachi, and Yasu, it's not going to be easy, but he's going to have that support he never had. And I wish one day we will be able to see it. Like I said though, I believe in Shin. And that's my video. I forgot how fun making these videos are. Shin has skyrocketed as one of my favorite characters not only in Nana, but just in general. There were so many complexities to his character that could be interpreted in different ways. So like always, let me know what you think of Shin in the comments.